Today I want to talk about Myanmar, former name of the country is Burma, because the garment industry of Myanmar is one of the most leading export sectors of the country. What are the country-specific characteristics of the fast fashion industry, supply chains, and garment factories in Myanmar? This video will be dedicated to this very question, in which I will help you understand the struggles of Burmese garment workers. Hello everyone, this is Asir Sorbekova and welcome to my channel where I help you understand matters of fast fashion and sustainable development the legal way. So it is all things fast fashion and fashion where I attempt to explain you issues of labor rights in the fast fashion industry. So without further ado, let's get it started. While still small compared to major producers such as China and Bangladesh, the garment industry of Myanmar is growing exponentially. The Burmese garment industry export value reached under the Cut Make Pack CMP system were uh, worth uh, 3.6 billion in the past 10 months of fiscal 2019-2020. The export figures reflect a decrease of 60 million US dollars uh, compared to the same period in the last fiscal year. Well, uh, the decrease is understandable due to the corona time. Furthermore, according to the official data, the garment manufacturing is estimated to employ around 3,800 workers in more than 400 factories. Um, and out of these 380,000 uh, workers, 90% are young women. As you can see, there are predominantly women workers. After years of economic isolation, foreign investment is now blooming in Myanmar as many economic sanctions, including those of the European Union and the USA, were suspended and later lifted following the first steps towards democracy and reform in the country. The garment industry has benefited greatly from the influx of foreign investment and has thus grown exponentially in recent years thanks to the lifting of these sanctions. So in other words, the sanctions were removed but it had little if any effect on many garment workers who are still deprived of realization of their labor rights. And exactly the influx and race to the bottom policies of Myanmar, meaning the policies that were crafted without due regard for labor rights and environment, contributed to the fact that labor rights are practically very, very weak in the country when it comes to the garment and textile industry of Myanmar. Now, uh, before talking about what actually is problematic in terms of labor rights, what are the problems when it comes to the realization of these rights, I would like to uh, anyway f uh, touch upon um, the positive sides of this industry. As I have noticed uh, personally to me, there are uh, a few uh, positive traits of this industry. And uh, of course, uh, one can find many, but to me, it, there turns out to be these three ones. Um, I, again, I repeat, the list may not be exhaustive, just that these are the things that I have found myself and would like to share with you. So the very first positive trait is that we need to mention that the country is open for collaboration with some international bodies, like in the face of international labor organization. Uh, in the face of uh, a, for example, we need to mention a project which is called Imp Improving Labor Relations for Decent Work and Sustainable Development in the Myanmar Garment Industry, ILO GIP project. So this ILO GIP project aims to reduce poverty and contribute to the empowerment of women. Because I remember I said that the, the, the industries workers are represented um, mainly by um, female workers, that there are more than 90% of uh, female workers uh, in the industry. So apart from contributing to the empowerment of Myanmar women working in the garment industry, uh, the uh, ILO GIP uh, project uh, or GIP project improves labor relations, social dialogue, and gender equality. So if you want to know more about this project, I suggest that you check out the uh, description box down below. The second positive trait to me is a presence of health clinics in factories. 
Um, that is a very good thing. These clinics cannot, of course, replace hospitals or proper doctor cabinets, but they are a great start. There were, however, reports stating that in order to make a profit, factories may save money by not equipping the clinic with proper resources, or that there is not enough medical experience and drugs to help sick workers. But all in all, as a rule of thumb, it is a very positive uh, step towards uh, implementing occupational safety and health measures that are required by law, both international and national law. Of course, it doesn't say anywhere that garment factories and sweatshops must have uh, health clinics, but uh, the very presence of these um, clinics is um, just incredible. So far, uh, I think uh, that Myanmar is uh, one of the few countries which implements uh, this uh, health clinic uh, policy, uh, integration of health clinics in uh, garment factories. I think it's just commendable. The third positive trait to me is the prevailing percentage of female managers versus male managers or supervisors. And this actually leads to lack of sexual harassment or gender-based mistreatment by uh, male colleagues and supervisors in comparison with uh, other countries. This leads to the fact that... Um, you know, not much harassment can happen at workplace. So that is a good thing. Of course, it doesn't mean that it, they, it doesn't happen at all, but it, it's just uh, in comparison with other countries, uh, the percentage is very, very small. Because again, it's because of the fact that the managerial staff is women, whereas in other countries, it is not. Usually that these positions are given to men. Uh, this is also impressive to me, uh, given that elsewhere it is men who are favored on managerial positions. Now, let me talk about negative uh, sides of the uh, garment and textile industry of Myanmar as a supply chain country of the fast fashion industry, one of the supply chains. So um, here are the following issues that I have come across that I have uh, uh, found out while researching uh, searching for information on Myanmar. Issue number one is regarding migrant workers' rights, because we said that there are 90% women, more than 90% of women who are uh, who work as garment uh, workers uh, in the industry. Uh, so, um, but it's also that it's also related, actually, uh, the situation of women also is related to the protection of migrant workers, because it turns out, you know, there are many uh, ethnic uh, ethnicities in uh, Myanmar, and uh, while there is a majority, uh, the, the, the main um, while the Bahma is the majority group, majority ethnic group who are working in the garment uh, factories, uh, there is still a, a percentage of other ethnic groups such as Rahin, Mro, Mon, and Karan who are also working. So that it means that, you know, these migrant workers, it turns out, you know, they travel from other parts of the country and, uh, you know, they uh, have to stay uh, away from their, uh, you know, uh, province their homelands in order to work. The second issue is that we need to add that as more than 90% of workers are women, as uh, I, I told you before. This brings issues of women's rights. Female workers are limited going to the toilet too often and their lunch time is only 30 minutes. You know, it's not really related to the issue of uh, women's rights per se specifically, but um, you know, statistically, if you look at, um, you know, if you just go, uh, you know, stand on a line or on a public uh, place, uh, you know, if it's a mall or something, then you, you wait for uh, your turn in a toilet. Uh, you will see that, uh, you know, female restrooms, uh, you know, have uh, more of visitors more uh, attending than uh, male ones because you know the the human uh, the female human body is constructed in such a way as uh, to be uh, obliging uh, the, the the female to go to the restroom more often than a, a male one and their lunch time is only 30 minutes so um, it's kind of like a gender uh, based mistreatment we can uh, we can put it that, that way 
Uh, moreover, um, there are some issues with the maternity leave, you know, um, women uh, not being able to get a uh, sick leave or, you know, a day off for personal and family circumstances, they cannot, you know, their child is sick or they are sick for this or that reason or they're pregnant. So th these things uh, complicate their life. And the third issue is related to working hours. It appears that they work six days per week and that uh, they um, regularly work 10 or more hours per day. So can you imagine uh, working 60 to 75, 80 hours per week? So basically doing uh, double the amount of a single, uh, you know, uh, single weekly load. So doing uh, working in a week um, an amount of hours that are equal to two weeks of work and then getting pennies. To this, we need to add that workers rarely in Myanmar refuse to work overtime because they need extra overtime pay to supplement a salary that fails to meet living uh, costs and that these living costs are rising. Or sometimes uh, because of a reason uh, of coercion or intimidation from the managerial staff. Um, and uh, it says that management and owners actively discourage workers from taking time off work. So it's really, um, you know, down, goes down that line. And on top of that, most face disproportionate wage deductions for taking days off. Some workers even stated that the deduction used as a punishment and deterrent was over 20,000 MMK per day. I will uh, write right here how much is in 20,000 MMK, the Myanmar um, currency in USD. Issue number four, and this is actually related to the issue number three regarding the working hours. Basically, um, you know, uh, workers uh, reported that their employer is following the minimum wage policy uh, since it was introduced uh, on the first on the first of September 2015. You know, but they said that the minimum wage actually it doesn't mean anything. Because you know the the living uh, way the, the living uh, wage uh, uh, is getting higher and higher since the introduction of the minimum wage. Um, working conditions have become harsher both in terms of expected worker output, work output, and strict regulations. Because, you know, workers are still struggling in Myanmar to make ends meet, just as they did before the minimum wage was implemented due to the rises in inflation and commodity prices. And I would like to please draw your attention to the following fact. It turns out that for sewing, workers need to finish 30 clothes per hour. Can you imagine? It's not three clothes. It's not 13 clothes. It's 30, three zero. Per hour, it's it's just insane how, you know, these workers have to rush within an hour. And if they cannot do it, they have to work overtime. Issue number five, uh, it's about the engagement of workers with labor unions. It turns out that, um, you know, more than half of uh, the workers in the garment industry of Myanmar know what a labor union is. However, 46% of Burmese workers have never heard of labor unions. It turns out they uh, do their best in um, representing workers and uh, trying to change something. Of course, it doesn't always translate into results, but at least you know that they are independent. That's a good thing. Uh, however, uh, the leaders of the worker groups, um, you know, they say they're saying that they were forced to leave the, their job and other factory owners do not want to give job for such kind of active persons. That's why female workers are not interested in joining the union since they are afraid to lose their jobs. So as you can see, the, there is this thing uh, with them. Um, uh, disfavoring joining uh, trade unions. It turns out also that um, in their workplaces, uh, these, um, you know, members of uh, trade unions, labor unions, they are always under surveillance by CCTV cameras. Uh, not that the, only these workers would be, you know, 
uh, under surveillance, but um, everybody is. But the, the ones that are in uh, trade unions, they uh, face harsher, you know, uh, c conditions because, you know, uh, uh, okay, the the um, for example, the hall is uh, being monitored, but uh, uh, if nobody is uh, you know joining any group and just not gathering in groups in halls, okay, it, it's fine, right? So, but as as soon as these uh, groups start gathering or talking and stuff, it uh, it creates suspicion, and then the CCTVs are all the way there, so it makes um, uh, it's it. it it lays an additional burden on uh, uh, or these uh, trade unions to exist. Last but not least, I wanted to add uh, another, um, you know, negative trait, uh, which I noticed is um, about, it's about um, presence of daily contracts. You heard me right, daily contracts. Have you heard of such a nonsense uh, a thing? that, uh, you know, garment workers uh, can be hired on a daily basis. A monthly basis is something more or less understandable when uh, it comes to hiring a new a newbie, right? Uh, but uh, daily contracts is a, in, a, in a completely insane idea, and this is what actually is, uh, turns out, uh, something that is practiced in Myanmar. It turns out that uh, they are, you know, in Myanmar, they practice the cut, make, pack CMP system, which means that they basically lack, um, you know, high tech. So Myanmar is uh, trying to become one of the most uh, leading, uh, you know, countries uh, that uh, produce clothes. So it turns out that, as you have seen, uh, these uh, female workers, they are the driving force of this economy. So uh, instead of uh, thinking of these uh, people, uh, what the country is doing, what the country has made a plan for 10 years to ensure that, you know, they will be one of the leading ones, you know. Uh, so far, yeah, so far uh, they have managed to, uh, you know, advance, but they are not there yet. But what they are trying to do is that they are, you know, they're trying to achieve this goal and um, uh, they're still keeping salaries low. Um, and uh, what is happening is that these women are not getting empowered. These women are basically uh, being left out of the scene. The government is not giving them the voice. Um, the government is not thinking of their, uh, you know, hu personal human development. It's just um, uh, trying to find a shortcut to reach that objective of becoming one of the most uh, uh, leading countries uh, like China and Bangladesh. Um, so that's uh, point number one. I think that they, they need to work on it. The second one is that uh, the country has attracted foreign direct investors in this field and that many, uh, unlike in Bangladesh, for example, many uh, factories, they are owned uh, either exclusively by foreign companies like Korean, Chinese, Japanese, etc., uh, that these foreign investors, they come uh, and open their own factories uh, as opposed to the situation of Bangladesh where garment factories are actually, uh, you know, mostly uh, dominant, predominantly owned by, um, I mean, individual, if we look at individual factories, right? I'm not talking about uh, uh, share of uh, you know portions of shares um, um, in the in the company that if for example in Bangladesh uh, these factories and sweatshops they are predominantly owned by a local investors local uh, Bangladesh citizens whereas for example uh, in Myanmar there is also a there's a uh, tendency of uh, uh, these factories, uh, garment factories, um, built by foreign companies. This actually, to me, creates a, another layer of um, difficulty because the government obviously uh, cannot, uh, you know, uh, demand the way it could demand from local investors the, the level of responsibility because they are foreigners, right? Because uh, they um, they are protected. They are privileged in um, 
these countries such as Myanmar. So I think that uh, the government needs to work with these owners of uh, these uh, garment factories in order to ensure that they will be more responsible in order to ensure that they will have more accountability and will provide for more measures in terms of uh, occupational safety and health and in terms of empowering these women. Because um, the consumer, the, the preferences and interests of the consumer have been changing. There's a m much better awareness of what is happening. That's all for today. Thank you for stopping by and checking out my video. Uh, for videos uh, on fast fashion and sustainable development, please subscribe to my channel and join me every Sunday by 10 a.m. CT. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and uh, smash the like button. Thank you for watching. Take care and see you next time. Bye!